In this screencast, I want to discuss linear transformations. Um, this is the simplest case of the kind of transformations we'll use to transform our integrals, so it's a nice place to start. What I'm particularly interested in is the geometry, so I want to discuss how my coordinates u and v get mapped under transformation t over to x, y. In particular, I want to focus on the sets of curves, which I'll call u and v curves. So I have curves where u is equal to a constant, which I'm showing here. So the, over here in this um, uv plane is obvious when u is equal to a constant. But these will get mapped under the transformation t also to, to, to straight lines over here in uv, depending on the coefficients of the transformation. They'll have a certain slope. I mean, there'll be curves in x, y, curves in x, y corresponding to u is equal to a constant. So as I say, as I trace up here, I'll have some curve over here. Then likewise, there'll be curves in which v is equal to a constant, and u varies, and they'll correspond to some, some different set of curves over here. Again, they will depend on the transformation. So these are curves v is equal to a constant. And the point is you can tell a lot about the, the transformation, about the geometry of the situation, simply by looking at this, this set of curves. So I, here I have a regular uh, rectangular grid in uv, and this will get mapped by my transformation into some still uh, regular grid, but, uh, but skewed in some way. And in particular, it will, um, so it will transform the geometry, and it will allow me to integrate over different kinds of regions here in, in x, y by uh, looking at yet square, uh, or let's say rectangular regions in uv. So let's just pick one here, let's just say I'm not sure if this is right, but let's just say that nice rectangular region gets mapped into some general um, parallelogram here, and uh, its area will change. So even so, I might have a unit area over here, and there'll be some some area here. So that's just one I wanted to discuss for a particular example. I've chosen this example, just one example to do. I've written the transformation here in terms of the component functions. X is a function of u and v, and y is a function of u and v. I want to look at the geometry, and I want to do it um, uh, semi-quantitatively. Um, let's look at, uh, I'll look at the curves in which u is equal to a constant. I will call that constant u0. And I want to look at what these, um, what these correspond to in x, y. The first thing you should do is simply, you, uh, by looking at setting, setting u equal to 0, say u0 equals 0, you can simply take the ratio of these y over x, and that will give you 2v over v. I did this right, which will give me two. Which will me that, tell me that the um, that these curves on which u is equal to a constant will be straight lines with slope two. There will be some intercept which depends on u naught, and you can work it out. I'll let you do that. You just um, set u equal to a constant, and then eliminate v, and you'll arrive at this equation. All right. But the important part is that they um, these uh, these curves have slope two. I'll plot them in just a minute. I can also do the curves v is equal to a constant. And again, just if you just set v naught equal to zero, you can take the ratio of y over x in here, and you will get u over two u, which will give you one half. And as I say, the curves will be uh, y is equal to one half x, so they'll have slope a half, and then you can work out what this constant is, and you'll see that it's three halves v zero. All right, so let's have a go at plotting this. Again, what I want to do is I want to consider here in uv, I want to consider these this sets of curves. Let's do this one here. This set of curves. And let's do the whole thing. This whole set here. I'll draw those in yellow. This curves on which u is equal to a constant. And then I'm going to consider these this set of curves here, on which v is equal to a constant. And those will be here. And I want to see how they're mapped. And I'm just going to again for one one case I wanted to do it semi quantitatively. And for that, let me show you something. We're going to use some graph paper. Let's zoom in a little bit too. So let's draw some a coordinate system for my x, y. So I'm going to set, obsess about this just one time. Make a nice plot. All right. So what about my curves? Um, u is equal to uh, u is equal to a constant. Well, those had slope two. So I'll go ahead and draw. That's over one, up two, over one, up two, over one, up two. I right, said so the curves like this: over one, up two, over one, up two. I did that parallel. 
I draw, draw some more in just a second. Then I have my V curves. My V curves are, have slope a half, so that's over two, up one, over two, up one. I'm going to draw another one here. Over two, up one, over two, up one. I'm going to draw one um, over two, up one. Let me not screw up. All right, let's see, should I draw some more? Well, I'll draw one more and hopefully it won't mess this up. Well, well, that wasn't perfect, but all right. So that's what that's what you that's what you get. So I trust you could do that. Um, you can do this algebra, and you could um, you can actually get these curves again. Let me just emphasize here that, uh, in particular, this is the case where u is equal to zero. So if I set u equal to zero and I'm going to increase v, I will trace out this line right here. Okay, and likewise, if I set uh, u is equal to, uh, v is equal to zero and increase u, I will trace out this line right here. All right, and then it'll be true. Just by adjusting these constants, I can get all these lines. All right, so the final thing is this Jacobian. Uh, the Jacobian of the transformation is the determinant of the coefficients of the transformation, or more generally, you could actually do the partial derivatives, which will give you the same thing as these coefficients. So it's the determinant 2, 1, 1, 2. Okay, so that determinant is uh, 4 minus 1, 4 minus 1 equals 3. Okay, and so just to remind you, what that means is that an element of area here, because it's linear, it's any, it's true for all areas, finite or infinitesimal. An element of area in x, y will be given by the magnitude of the Jacobian. In this case, it's it's positive times delta u, delta v. And so we can see, hopefully, maybe that this is true. I've tried to draw this here. Let me zoom back in here. Again, I tried to do this quantitatively here, semi-quantitatively. This region right here that I'm highlighting corresponds to the units to a unit square in UV. Now, I didn't draw, actually I didn't draw UV um, uh, quantitatively, but this this line has already said that corresponds to uh, v equals zero and u increasing. This corresponds to u equals zero and v increasing. This corresponds to v equal one. This corresponds to u equal one. So this the the unit square in UV if I draw it correctly, a unit square in UV, I want to go ahead and draw it here, unit square over here, in UV gets mapped by T to that region, and hopefully if I didn't mess it up by sketching over too much, you can see that this has this has area 1, and this has area 3. Let me erase it so you can see it, and you can just study that, oh I messed it up a little bit. See there's area, there's one unit of area, there's another unit of area up here, and there's another unit of area here. So it all works out nicely. So that's, uh, that's all I'm going to say about linear transformations. I will do one integration using the same linear transformation in a few screencasts from now.